Welcome back. Following our Hidalgo's Golden Age speech and Antonio's poem about duels and marriage, chapters 12 through 14 of Don Quixote, part one, turn to the love, or rather lack of love, between Grisostomo and Marcela. This sequence is a pastoral preamble to the novel's central episodes about the lovers of the Sierra Morena. For now, notice how the story of Grisostomo and Marcela signals intermediary themes and spaces by a contrast between poverty and wealth, between town and countryside. While medicine is applied to Don Quixote's ear, Pedro arrives, another boy who brought them supplies from the village, and announces that this morning that famous student shepherd named Grisostomo died, and he's rumored to have died of love for that wicked girl Marcela, the daughter of the rich man Guillermo. Grisostomo has asked to be buried in the countryside like a moor and at the base of the rock where the spring flows next to the cork tree where he saw her for the first time. The burial promises to be quite a show directed by the great friend Ambrosio who apparently also dressed up like a shepherd to accompany Grisostomo when he was in love with Marcela. Obviously, Don Quixote's interest is piqued and everyone agrees to attend the funeral. Underscoring the theme of love as a kind of wound, an anonymous shepherd offers to stay behind with the other's goats, indicating that he cannot walk because of a thorn that stabbed my foot the other day. We learn more about Grisostomo. He was a rich hijo de algo, resident of a place in those nearby mountains, and he had been a student for many years in Salamanca. According to Pedro, Grisostomo had great wisdom, cosmic knowledge even, because he knew the science of the stars and measured astronomical rhythms. He always told us when there'd be the eclipse of the sun and the moon. One of Cervantes' favorite techniques is to let neurotic characters correct the linguistic errors of others. Here Don Quixote interrupts Pedro three times. The darkening of those two luminaries is called eclipse, my friend, not clips. Then when Pedro says that Grisostomo could tell when it would be a difficult or bare year, Don Quixote interjects, you mean barren, my friend. And finally, the knight explains that this science is called astrology. In the end, the romantic young Hidalgo had made everyone rich by his predictions, and on top of that, he had a reputation for writing Christmas carols. So Crisostomo and Ambrosio, the two scholars, surprised many when they suddenly exchanged the dress of students for that of shepherds. Note that they are shepherds of both goats and cows, perhaps alluding to the problematic distinction between the pastoral and Georgic genres of poetry. Finally, we learn that the young man's life went south because of that shepherdess Marcella, with whom poor deceased Grisostomo had fallen in love. Don Quixote's censorship reaches its climax when Pedro says that you will never hear anything like it all the days of your life, though you may live longer than serum. Don Quixote cannot handle the error. Say, Sarah, according to Abraham's wife, who lived 110 years. Now the boy gets angry. Sir, if you keep correcting every word I say, we won't finish in a year. Abraham is common to the Christian, Jewish, and Islamic traditions. His subtle appearance at this point in the narrative is not likely accidental. Pedro continues his story, focusing now on Marcella and on the issue of relative wealth, which will be important to all the lovers of the novel. A farmer, even richer than Grisostomo's father, whose name was Guillermo, had a daughter whose mother died giving birth to her. Referring again to astronomy, Pedro describes Marcella's mother as having a face which had elements of both the sun and the moon. And of course, the daughter inherited her mother's beauty. The curious absence of mothers in the plots of the era's novels and plays is another aspect of the Spanish Golden Age. After her father dies, Marcella ends up in the care of her uncle, who on the one hand is somewhat extreme because he keeps her very secluded, but on the other hand is quite liberal because he wouldn't marry her without her consent. There is sarcasm here when the narrator overemphasizes the fact that the uncle did all this without any eye to the profit and gain he would enjoy by delaying her marriage. Along with Don Quixote's niece, Dulcinea, and Harifa, 
Marcela joins a long list of women in the novel, all more or less rich and extremely beautiful, who will serve as the principal objects of desire for an equally long list of male suitors. And Marcela is the allegorical engine for all the rest of the novel's love stories, because hers is a kind of moral case study. The difficulties revolve around her will. Pedro underscores this key detail, because Marcela refused to marry, her uncle stopped insisting. Because he said, and he said rightly, that parents ought not to wed their children against their will. Here's the comedic hyperbole of Cervantes' narrative at its best. The effects of Marcella's chastity are hilarious. First, she makes her own destiny. She took to the field with the other shepherdesses of the realm and set about caring for her own flock. At this, according to Pedro, an infinite number of rich youths, gentlemen, and farmers dressed up like Grisostomo and stalked about in those fields, bemoaning their love for her. And every time one of these shepherds propositions her, Marcella blows him off like a blunderbust. The result is a kind of psychosexual plague, for the disappointment that Marcella causes among so many aspirants makes these hills and valleys echo with their laments. There's even a place where there are nearly two dozen tall beech trees, and there's not one whose smooth bark does not have written and carved into it Marcella's name. And at the top of some, there's even a crown carved into the tree, as if her lover wished to state with supreme clarity that Marcella wears and deserves that crown more than any other human beauty. At the end of all this information about Grisostomo and Marcella, notice how the narrative relates everything back to the madness or disease of Don Quixote. Our Hidalgo has no choice but to attend Grisostomo's funeral, for as he confesses, I am very intrigued. And when the goat herder indicates that the knight should spend the night under a roof because the night air might aggravate that wound, the narrator reports that Don Quixote did just so and spent the rest of the night thinking of his lady Dulcinea, in imitation of Marcela's lovers, adding as a final detail that Sancho settled down between Rocinante and his ass and slept, not like a lover, but as soundly as a man who had been thrashed by kicks.